In the 1960s, the pressure generated by the space race to push the boundaries of space exploration often led to outlandish NASA projects. The MOLAB, or Moderate Capacity Mobile Laboratory, was one of them. In 1963, NASA partnered with General Motors to create a giant truck capable of driving around the moon's surface. After the successful Apollo 11 landing in 1969, the idea of a permanent base on the moon seemed possible once again. The MOLAB, a four-wheeled rover vehicle that functioned as a roaming laboratory, could accommodate a pair of astronauts inside its cabin with enough supplies for two weeks. The vehicle could also travel at a speed of 11 miles per hour over the moon's steep and rocky hills. But the 8,200-pound moon truck was so massive that putting it into outer space proved to be a daunting task, challenging scientists to come up with their most creative ideas for a new kind of automotive assembly in space. Moon Exploration Lunar exploration goes as far back as 5,000 years ago. The first astronomy studies consisted of observing the moon's cycle. By the 5th century BC, Babylonian astronomers had already redacted a report of the 18-year Saros cycle of lunar eclipses. In the same century, Indian astronomers wrote a manuscript of the moon's monthly elongation. Although astronomers have been fascinated by the moon for centuries, it wasn't until the 1960s that its exploration turned to the actual surface. As modern radars and cameras substituted the telescope, it became common knowledge that the moon could provide data on comparative planetology, be the source of valuable, perhaps then unknown minerals, and even deliver information about the evolution of the solar system. NASA After Soviet cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin became the first man to journey into outer space in 1961, President John F. Kennedy was firm on his plans to land a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Throughout the 1960s, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration became the forerunner of moon exploration by developing several programs that got close to putting a man onto it. The first of these projects was the Ranger program. After several failed attempts, in July 1964, the Ranger 7 was finally able to transmit astonishing images of the moon's surface. By 1966, the Lunar Orbiter program authorized five unmanned missions that launched lunar orbiters into space with the objective of surveying the optimal landing spot on the moon by mapping out its surface. The NASA Surveyor program, which ran from 1966 through 1968, then commissioned the launch of seven robotic spacecraft to demonstrate the possibility of soft landing on the natural satellite. Finally, in 1969, the Apollo 11 mission made history by successfully landing humans on the moon. Robots on the Moon After the successful Apollo 11 mission, NASA set its sights on more in-depth journeys. There was a genuine interest in continuing to explore the moon, and the agency began to consider setting up a permanent base. NASA needed an integral program to obtain all the information they could from the moon. These new missions were expected to last more than two weeks. Such an ambitious plan would entail several programs, each with their own set of objectives. To study the moon's surface from afar, orbital survey devices would utilize geophysical methods such as gravity anomaly detection and photography. These lunar orbiters would be able to further explore the terrain. In order to add a temporal factor to the experimental missions and provide new data on the effects of the human body in space, extended operations would be reinforced by manned semi-permanent or permanent bases. These explorations would be the longest and most thorough ones. To round out the plans, surface exploration vehicles would be used to study geological, geochemical, and geophysical phenomena on the moon. One of the first surface exploration devices that NASA considered was a mobile lunar laboratory known as MOLAB. Instead of overstuffing crewed missions on a capsule with a fortnight's worth of supplies and oxygen, this NASA MOLAB vehicle would also double as an artificial habitat for astronauts in the field. The Mobile Laboratory The MOLAB project began in 1963 as part of a series of innovations to be used along the imminent permanent lunar base called Apollo Logistics Support System.
The mobile lab would be a large, four-wheeled pressurized vehicle used for long-range exploration after the Apollo program. It was expected to be the first in a series of models that would advance moon exploration. In a joint operation with NASA, General Motors designed and built the mobile laboratory. According to the NASA contractor report, this mobile laboratory would, quote, be commanded to perform a wide variety of prescribed functions throughout its useful life on the moon's surface. The sphere of influence would extend to all major disciplines associated with the vehicle, such as power, navigation, mobility, scientific instrumentation, and communication. The vehicle weighed 8,200 pounds and was powered by a modified Chevrolet Corvair engine. It was designed to survive six months in quiescent storage on the lunar surface. It could accommodate two astronauts inside its 32-square-foot cabin with enough supplies for two weeks. In case of emergency, the MOLAB's loadout and control systems could be modified to support up to three people, albeit for a shorter period of time. One of the most significant challenges in creating the prototype was constructing a set of wheels that could withstand the vehicle's weight without losing maneuverability. General Motors partnered with Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company to create a large frame wheel with the capacity to withhold massive amounts of pressure. Because of its towering size, the Apollo Logistics Support System vehicle required two separate launches to reach outer space. The first one would deliver the MOLAB, including all its components and supplies. The second one would take the two astronauts to the landing site. When the prototype was ready, NASA tested the vehicle in the New Mexico desert. For years, Apollo astronauts also trained by driving the MOLAB around. Getting around the moon. To accomplish its two-week mission on the lunar surface, the MOLAB would operate in four different navigation modes. In the remote control mode, the vehicle would travel around the moon's surface moderated by an earthbound station's control team. In the normal traverse mode, the two astronauts would operate the MOLAB from aboard. Every movement would be recorded by a camera attached to the vehicle. The camera would also gather information on the trip and coordinates so that the astronauts could find their way back to the lunar module. Another setting called the Accurate Position Fixed Mode would be used when the mission's leaders were required to pinpoint a specific location with detailed accuracy while the MOLAB was in stationary mode. Finally, a survey mode would be used to check the initial system conditions and correct previous errors. This setting would require accurate angle and range measurements to synthesize moon surface maps and determine elevations and demotions in the terrain. The mobile laboratory's standard mission would begin with an unmanned landing, followed by a remote checkup from an earthbound base to ensure it did not suffer significant damage during the maneuver. The MOLAB would stay on standby mode for up to six months while the astronauts landed on the moon. After a routine checkup, the crewed Apollo mission would take off from Earth. Following a successful landing, the MOLAB would be directed via remote control to the manned lunar module. The two astronauts would then embark on a 14-day journey through the moon's surface. After the scouting, the men would use the journey's recording to return to the Apollo lunar module and head back to Earth. Cancellation. The MOLAB program was a symbol of America's ambitious lunar goals and a significant milestone in rover technology. But NASA canceled all future Apollo programs. Because the MOLAB was intrinsically tied to their development, plans for a permanent lunar base or a mobile laboratory fell through. Weight restrictions also kept the MOLAB on Earth. Because of the rover's size, it could only be launched to the moon aboard a Saturn V heavy lift launch vehicle. However, with the cost of Saturn V launches increasing, and the Vietnam War weighing on the U.S.'s budget priorities, the MOLAB was cancelled in favor of other payload priorities. Rather than scrapping the prototype for future experimental projects, NASA loaned the rover to the United States Geological Survey, the scientific agency where scientists study America's landscapes, their resources, and the natural hazards that threaten them. The agency also used the MOLAB for several missions that produced groundbreaking geological discoveries in the American Southwest. The MOLAB project was cancelled in its entirety in 1968, and the only surviving prototype can be found at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center Museum in Huntsville, Alabama. Although the MOLAB never launched into space and the program ended 50 years ago, its technology has influenced current pressurized rover designs. One of them is the Curiosity, the car-sized rover built to explore the Gale Crater in Mars 
as part of NASA's Mars Science Laboratory mission. Future rover vehicles have often smaller than the infamous moon truck, requiring only one trip to function in outer space. <laughs>